this camera up to get the good. There we go, that's busting, that's busting. I can't believe it. I just said bust. Howdy. Um, this is my music recommendations for um, this week. This is gonna be like a new series. So cue the cool intro. <laughs> So we're gonna go from, so it's like a top five list, five being the one I like, I still do recommend it, but it's not the one I most recommend. So we're gonna go five, four, three, yeah, and so on. So, at the bottom, I have, I'm gonna move over, so the album art can appear here. At number five, I have... <laughs> I have Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots by the Flaming Lips. So, this is a great album. I love this album. It uh, came out in 2003. I listened to it for the first time on CD after watching Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and hearing Do You Realize in there. So, um, yeah, I fell in love with this album when I heard it. Um, my favourites from the album, I would say, are the whole album. It's just really good. And I, 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 I cannot persuade you more to listen to it if you are a massive fan of like, um, you know, kind of lo-fi stuff. Like you've got the you've got the traditional rock. You know, it's not it's not much rock, uh, but it is. Um, yeah, it's very elect uh, not electronic. I, I don't know how to describe it. It has this very futuristic feeling to it, and um, if you if you love that sort of stuff, I I can't help but recommend this album more. So yeah, that's five Yoshimi know, Battles of the Pink Robots by the Flaming Lips. Alright, so four. Uh, so for four, <coughs> that's something in my throat, I swear. Four, I recommend <coughs> Suck and See by the Arctic Monkeys. And the title does not mean what you think it means. Trust me, it does not mean that. Are you sure about that? So uh, this album came out in 2011, and I think I was like, when it came out, my dad played it on repeat. It's his favorite Arctic Monkeys album. Mine too. Pretty sure there's someone outside my door, and I'm very scared right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, my dad played this on repeat because it was his favorite Arctic Monkeys album, and still is. It's 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 mine as well, tied with Humbug, I would say. Um, I can't believe I didn't put Humbug on this list, but I also love Humbug. So yeah. Um, again, my favourites from this album are the whole album. It is like, a lot of people uh, call it uh, the summer album for Arctic Monkeys, but I, I would call it a winter album because... Um, I lived in Ballarat and it's, it's, it's cold up there, man. It is cold. So like... Um, um, no, I associate it with the winter feeling. There are some songs which, you know, kind of bring out the summer feeling. But, like, do you want me to shut up? Yeah, I should probably shut up, shouldn't I? Yeah. That's how I lost friends, <laughs> by just talking on and on and on. Yeah. Four. Sucking his head by the Arctic Monkeys. Okay. Number three. Number three, I would say, is Bring It On by Gomez. So... I did a cover of Whip and Piccadilly, which is the second song off of that album. And um, up until that point, I'd never listened to it. Well, no, up, in, up until like a couple weeks, like a week after I filmed and released that video, I did not listen to that album. I, I've only heard like Whip and Piccadilly and Get Miles, which is the first song. So I sat down in bed and I listened to the entire thing and I fell in love with it. Um, it's just, it's the most... It's not the most, but it's, it's so druggy. Like, they're a British band, you know? So, like, this is, you can tell that there's so much drugs going on. There's this, um, if you listen to the studio version of Whip and Pig Daily, over in the right ear, what I tried to simulate that, um, those noises with an electric guitar, 
which I uh, couldn't properly do. Some people, I, yeah, I'll shut up again. Okay, yeah, so that's number three. That's number three on my list. Do it. Okay, number two is the Software Slump by Granddaddy. Okay, so um, this is one of my favorite bands at the moment. I, I started listening to them back in like March or April after my dad played them in the car. Uh, like a couple songs from their third album, Someday, and I fell in love with it. So I actually listened to Someday first, but I prefer the software song over Someday because it has these, um, I would say, uh, this, the, the songs in Someday are very simple, but yeah, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but on the software slump, they are on another level. They have these, they have this, um, like it opens with an eight minute, like epic pretty much called He's Simple, He's Dumb, He's the Pilot. I, I, bra I break down every time I hear that song. It's depressing, man. And then it goes on, like, Hewlett's Daughter, Jed the Humanoid, which is another depressing song. And then it also has these really rocky bits, like Charts and Graphs and um, Broken Household National Appliance. Ooh, I messed it up. Broken Household Appliance National Forest. Yeah, um, so it's a great album. It's, it's seriously in my, like, one of my favourite albums at the moment right now. And are all the ones that I've put on this list. But yeah, listen to that one. Pretty much changed my life, man. And finally, we're at number one. We're, we're, we're at, no, do you want me to get away from it? Yeah, okay. Number one, the album that I'm really into right now is The Holy Bible by Manic Street Preachers. Okay, I don't mind that cover art. It may freak you out a little bit. It, it, it freaked me out when I first saw it. Like. Eight, seven or eight years ago. Yeah, so um, this album has been with me for a long time. My dad, um, my dad's a big fan of Manic Street Preachers, and he would he um he introduced me to them, but he was very um he was very explicit on not to listen to the, to the rest of this album besides like the singles that they released, which were like Faster and Revol and stuff. And yes, uh, that wasn't a single, but it was a good song. Um, yeah, so, um, I was, I very much remember, I was listening to it on CD, like, I'm pretty sure it was f faster, I think, and then it went on to the next song, and then my dad came rushing in the room and turned it off, because that is how dark of an album it is, okay? The Holy Bible is no doubt one of the darkest albums I've ever listened to. So, the whole story behind Manic Street Preachers, you can go like a, you can go on a rabbit hole from this. So, Richie Edwards, um, he was the guitarist and, like, main lyricist until he went missing like a couple months after they released an album and they couldn't find him. And so like Richie, he, he, um, he struggled with uh, like depression, anorexia, mental health struggles and all that. And, you, um, and uh, from what I've read, the band members didn't really understand that. They thought he had just evolved to some like point of genius where he had written these pure genius lyrics, but they just never, they never understood him. So when, when he went missing, they finally realized that they finally realized what he was writing about. And I, I guess that's what I suppose from the interviews of it. Yeah, but anyway, this album is amazing. It's so good. I listened to it on the bus, like the entirety of it on the bus. And it just, it, it blew my mind. It was insane. It is no doubt the darkest album I've ever listened to. And if you're into that sort of like punk rock feeling, listen to this album. If you're into like punk rock, catchy melodies, dark lyrics, and all that, this album is for you, okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that is my music recommendations for this week. I will be back with you, I will be back to you next week on Sunday in October. <laughs> um, yeah, it's next, next Tuesday in October. I'll be back with you. So, I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. Get out of here. What? What are you doing? Well, I'm filming in here, go away. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Why can't I get out of here?